Rogue Shooter is an interesting little indie game developed by Hippo Mansa, released on Steam from Microsoft Windows. It's a game that undeniably takes its influences from crappy shooting games from the early 1990s, with the most obvious being Corridor 7, a game which it almost downright copies its entire premise from. I mean, you've got a melee kick which looks like a literally reskinned Mighty Boot from Duke Nukem 3D, the absurdities of the weapons that feel like something out of Rise of the Triad, and then you've got the cheesy MIDI soundtrack right out of an early 90s DOS game. So top marks for the way they've tipped their hats at the great and not so great shooters of yesteryear. In Rogue Shooter, you find yourself on the Helios space station, which has been overrun with aliens, robots, and other assorted things that just want to kill you. In the game's opening, you choose a player class, which has very little bearing on the game overall, aside from your starting gear. Then you begin from the bottom floor, clearing out bad guys one by one. Much like Corridor 7, when a certain amount of enemies are killed, you're allowed to progress onwards to the next floor, though killing the rest of the enemies is generally a good idea, for the simple reason that killing enemies gives you experience points, helping you to level up faster. You see, Rogue Shooter's got some basic RPG elements, as well as some perks that you can choose from every second level gained, though these benefits are very incidental. As is the style for most roguelike games, you play for a bit, then you die. In Rogue Shooter, you spend what's called Intel points on upgrading your character for the next playthrough. Then you do it all again, unlocking new player classes as you earn more Intel. Levels are also randomly generated each playthrough, along with items, enemy and weapon placements, of which there are many of each. I gotta admit, I was pretty surprised at how many guns there are in this game, and even more surprised at how much fun they generally are to use. Different varieties of shotguns, pistols, revolvers, and even some over-the-top weapons like shotgun tridents. Yes, shotgun tridents. You can also use items like shields, grenades, which come in multiple types, and even a teleport power-up, which feels just like the Chaos device ripped straight from Heretic. All of these can also be crafted from scientific ingredients that you come across in the levels, the recipes for which get unlocked the more you play. Each four floors, you reach a safe room where you can upgrade and repair weapons and armor to stop them from becoming broken or useless. These safe rooms also give you a chance to stock up on health and ammo, as well as run into people that were stationed on the space station. Now, I said earlier how the game randomly generates levels. Well, to be more accurate, I really should have said randomly generated hallways. There's very few open areas in this game. Most of them are just long, empty hallways that make it just that much more easier for the enemies to overrun you. You know what hallways in FPS games are good for? Well, I can tell you what they're not good for. Strafing. You know that most important skill that often means the difference between life and death? The only function in a shooting aim that is used as much, if not more so, than actual shooting. Being in a tight corridor where you can barely move left or right is just bad news. Those few moments when you get some fighting room and can do a bit of good old fashioned circle strafing is when the game really shines and I just wish there was a bit more variety in these layouts. What makes these tighter areas more difficult is that enemies have this uncanny and frustrating ability to grapple onto you, preventing you from moving entirely. Even the ranged enemies will beeline straight towards you, throwing projectiles from point blank range as they all pile up on top of you. Now this is an actual feature of the game and all I can say is, why? To give a good example of what this feels like, go load up Doom and play the last part in the first episode. Just after you've defeated the Barons of Hell and you get teleported to that dark room. Now this is basically what happens all the time in Rogue Shooter. It is annoying, frustrating and removes any sense of skill as you just become folly to the game's shortcomings. This happens when you're just trying to navigate levels as well and you'll find yourself inexplicably stuck on walls all the goddamn time. It is beyond irritating and can change the tide of a playthrough within seconds. I just don't know why the hell they would put this in. In a game where evading enemies and moving around to avoid damage is so paramount, controls like this just do not cut it. I have a few issues with other things as well. For starters, I found there'd be a severe lack of ammo most of the time, as well as practically no healing items to be found. Weapons and armor in particular also degrade at an extremely rapid rate, and I find I spend most of my cash repairing them instead of upgrading weapons or healing. Overall, how well you do will just largely depend on how lucky you get. I've had times where medkits and weapons drop every single floor, then other times when I've been killed seven or eight floors in because the game just wouldn't cut me some slack. There's 100 floors in total, and the best that I could do in the 10 odd hours that I played was make it to about floor 60 or so before I carked it. But still, there's definitely a lot of replayability and potential for Rogue Shooter. It does a very good job of being a homage to the old shooters of the 1990s. It's a really deep game for something that appears so simple on the surface, and to be honest, I barely touched on the multitude of items, weapons, and other gameplay features. 
there's also lots to unlock and experiment with over multiple playthroughs. And you can tell that these guys put a lot of time and effort in the game's characters and enemies, with there being quite a bit to read in the game's manual. But it does have a lot of big issues with the controls and some punishing and cheap irritations with the gameplay that really should have been ironed out. And at the moment, I can't really recommend it outright. If you're one of those people who appreciates older sprite-based FPS games and you think you'll be able to get the style and tone they're going for, then it's definitely worth checking out. Younger gamers are just going to be confused though and most of the content will go straight over their head.